Hello, B here, and welcome back to Integrated Physics and Chemistry. Have you ever gotten in trouble for leaving the door open on a cold winter day? Perhaps someone else in the house complained that you were letting the cold in. Is that true? Is cold something that can come inside? And what about a hot sunny day in the summer? Does leaving the door open let the warmth in or does it let the cool out? We'll look at how heat moves around in today's lesson and find out why you probably shouldn't leave the door open regardless of which way things are moving. But before we get started, let's look at our goals for this lesson. By the end, you'll be able to explain the difference between thermal energy, temperature, and heat, and describe the three methods of heat transfer. A few lessons back, when we learned about the different types of energy, we learned that thermal energy is the energy of heat. Sometimes it's tempting to use the terms thermal energy and heat interchangeably, but there is an important distinction between them that we'll look at today. Let's start with thermal energy. You know from earlier units in the course that the particles making up substances are always in motion. And you also know that the energy of motion is called kinetic energy. Putting these two ideas together means that all objects have internal kinetic energy from the movement of their particles, even these wooden blocks when they're sitting on the table. Thermal energy is simply the sum of all the internal kinetic energy of an object. Right now, each of these blocks has the same amount of thermal energy because they are identical. But if one block is heated with a flame, some of the energy from the flame will be transferred to the block. And now this block will have more thermal energy. Have you ever measured the temperature of something? You may remember from earlier in this course that temperature measures how quickly the particles of a substance are moving. So are temperature and thermal energy the same thing? Almost, but temperature measures the average kinetic energy, while thermal energy measures the sum of the kinetic energy. To understand the difference, let's look at two cups of coffee. Both cups are at the same temperature and have identical coffee in them. Do they both have the same thermal energy? No, because the one on the left is bigger and therefore has more molecules. More molecules moving fast means more thermal energy. So the size, or more specifically, the mass, matters when determining thermal energy, but does not matter when measuring temperature. If we only care about the average kinetic energy and want to measure temperature, do you remember what units can be used? Temperature is usually measured in kelvins or in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. With simple formulas, we can easily convert back and forth between each of these units. What about thermal energy? What units do you think thermal energy is measured in? It's a form of energy, so it's measured in joules. The word we haven't mentioned yet is heat. How do you think heat compares to thermal energy and temperature? Is it the same as either one? In everyday language, we sometimes do use these three words interchangeably, but in a scientific sense, heat is defined as a transfer of thermal energy. Think of heat as energy on the move. So when we asked the question earlier, are you letting the colds in when you leave the door open? It would be more accurate to say that you are letting the heat out since heat is what moves. Cold is simply the absence of heat. If some of the faster moving air molecules inside your warm house move outside or transfer some of their thermal energy to the air molecules already outside, there won't be as much thermal energy inside your house, making it feel colder. 
how do you think thermal energy could be transferred between molecules? There are actually three different ways for this to happen. Let's take a look at each. The most straightforward way to transfer heat is through conduction, which is simply the scientific way to say direct contact. Have you ever needed to run across hot concrete in bare feet? Or maybe when you were younger, you touched something on the stove that you shouldn't have? Ouch! These are examples of conduction, where heat is transferred between two objects that are touching. When fast-moving particles of a warmer object come into contact with slow-moving particles of a cooler object, collisions between particles where the two surfaces touch allow energy to be transferred. The faster particles lose energy as some of their momentum is transferred to the slower particles. Eventually, if contact continues, all particles and both objects will be at the same temperature, with all particles moving the same average speed, and no more heat transfer will occur. Heat is always transferred from hot to cold, because it is the faster moving particles that have momentum to lose when they collide with slower particles. Conduction is most common between solid substances, though it can occur in fluids as well. A more common method of heat transfer in fluids, though, is convection. What do you see happening while this water boils? Is there movement within the fluid? If so, in which direction? Make some observations to record in your notes, pausing the video if needed. In convection, warmer fluid molecules always rise because their faster speed causes them to spread out more, becoming less dense. The cooler, more dense molecules sink to the bottom. This can create a never-ending cycle of sinking and rising as heat is transferred to the bottom of a pot of water. The rising of warm air and sinking of cool air, known as convection currents, drives weather patterns across the globe, as some parts are heated more than others. Similar convection currents occur underwater in the oceans, as the water is also heated unevenly by the sun. This also influences global weather patterns on land and the marine life that lives in the sea. The last method of heat transfer is radiation. This is how the sun is able to transfer heat to Earth. Unlike conduction and convection, radiation does not require any matter at all to be transferred. It can go through empty space, sometimes called a vacuum. This type of heat transfer occurs through electromagnetic waves, which you will learn more about later in the course. At the beginning of the video, we wondered, what happens when the door gets left open? Well, we now know that heat will move toward the cooler space. What type of heat transfer is best shown by this example? It would primarily be convection because air is a fluid and the different temperatures inside and out will create convection currents, allowing the warmer molecules to move up then out the door as the cooler air molecules are sinking and moving in. In the summer, just the opposite would happen. In either case, probably better to keep the door closed if the heat or air conditioning is running, because if thermal energy is able to move, it will. And eventually, the inside and outside of your house will be the same temperature. As we went through the lesson today, we learned that thermal energy measures the sum of kinetic energy within a substance due to the movement of particles within the substance. The average kinetic energy can be measured as temperature. Heat is the transfer of this energy between substances and can happen through conduction, convection, and radiation. This wraps up our unit on energy. Next time, you'll review what you've learned in this unit and take the unit assessment. 
Until then, remember, the universe is vast and full of surprises, so never stop exploring. I'll see you next time. Hey, hey.